Hello Vinyl Community! Here I am with another selection of records I have listened to yesterday and today in the morning. Let me start with this 80s classic album Slave to the Rhythm by Grace Jones. Always a nice uh, needle drop. Um, this came out in 1985 when I was a very young and impressionable boy of maybe 14 years. Now this is of course another glorious Trevor Horn production and this edition here is a DMM, DMM reissue and uh, yeah I mean I mean um, Grace Jones left really an impression on me you must understand I I was born and I grew up in a small country called Czechoslovakia that basically doesn't exist anymore and uh, I came to Germany when I was 12 and uh, you must understand the first the first African or African-American person I saw with my own eyes was maybe when I was 15 or 16 and I think I was like 25 when I got to talk to the first black person and uh, this is not unusual if you grow up in a different culture so Grace Jones had this uh, interesting influence on me because I saw I saw a black artist that uh, was completely detached of any kind of stereotypical imagery or expectation uh, associated with uh, black musicians in general. So I have never seen someone like that before and I saw all these amazing music videos she did and complete little outlandish left field stuff. So I was really impressed and fascinated and um, this was a good lesson. Um, and, uh, yeah, thank you, Grace. Wonderful album. This here is, uh, Murdered by the Music by Yukihiro Takahashi. Um, this is one of early records by Takahashi that came out 1980. Check out this nice label. A print released on Static. And uh, it has a different cover. This is the European cover. Um, the, the, the original Japanese issues had a different cover. And here, the flip side with a photo of Yukihiro. And another great record. Now, of course, this is one of his close colleagues, Ryuichi Sakamoto, Neo Geo. This is a wonderful recording uh, from uh, late 80s, which was produced by Bill Laswell and Ryuichi Sakamoto together. Uh, it has a lot of bass playing by Bill Laswell. It also has uh, Bootsy Collins on bass and uh, Sly Dunbar and David Van Tegen. That's the album that has Risky on it, which is a song that Sakamoto wrote together with Iggy Pop. That's the backside. And it's a wonderful album. Uh, this is the first album that um, Sakamoto recorded with his uh, Neo Geo Orchestra, which is a group of basic uh, musicians that he also used for his tours, um, with the wonderful background singers that uh, I think came from Okinawa. Now this is another famous album by Ryuichi Sakamoto, Left Handed Dream. Uh, this came out in 1981. Now this is the Dutch pressing that uh, was released by uh, Plexus. And it is this wonderful flip side that I really like. Of course here are uh, Adrian Bellew, Robin Scott, Ryuichi Sakamoto. I mean Adrian doesn't look like he's enjoying this amazing moment in musical history so much <laughs> but this is a wonderful album man this is so great but this is this extended edition so uh, this album came with an additional additional 12 inch which has four tracks on it and uh, which are all produced by Sakamoto and Robin Scott and which are basically the core tracks of uh, their consecutive album, The Arrangement. More plexus. The Arrangement, I have it here on CD. 
Yeah, this is another great album. So let's change the style a little bit. And this is Blues for Salvador by Carlos Santana. Now it took me a while to realize that this is not an album in the Santana chronology. And I was a bit puzzled by that, but actually it makes sense. This is a solo album by Carlos Santana. Yeah, Santana is a band with Carlos in it, and this is a solo album. Um, does it sound different than a Santana album? Uh, yeah, to a certain degree. This is a co-production with Chester Thompson. Um, I like the sound of it. It's a very 80s album. I mean, especially the drumming by Chester Thompson is very 80s-like and uh, a lot of sort of a gated uh, drum sounds, tom sounds, and um, but um, the guitar playing is excellent. Um, especially the first two tracks, which is uh, Bailando slash Aquatic Park and Bella. Uh, I, they actually appeared a lot in uh, all kind of movies, I remember. Um, they are really very atmospheric and uh, that's a nice inner sleeve. So this is a good album. Yeah, and finally I have some CDs here that probably don't exist on vinyl that you might, you might find interesting. First of all, um, I can recommend uh, Apocrypha by Marta Sebastian. Marta Sebastian is a Hungarian uh, folk singer, but um, I mean she became she became quite prominent in this so-called world music scene by starting to combine all kind of uh, different styles, instruments, and musicians in her productions. Now this album came out in 1992 and was produced by Karoli Cseperes, and this is a great Hungarian musician. So uh, there is a certain sound to this album. Um, it's uh, it has uh, it's not only a folk album in uh, in the traditional sense of the word. There is a there is a certain almost experimental element to it, and therefore um, it's an excellent album. This here is the Forest by David Byrne. I don't know if this exists on vinyl. I haven't looked this up, but um, I have I have had this album for a very long time. This is um, sort of a orchestral slash experimental phase of David Byrne um, with uh, very programmatic tracks uh, exploring all kind of concepts like uh, like ancient cities and uh, it's a very very interesting album. I don't know if you know this one. Um, but uh, this is uh, really a joy to listen to it. It's uh, it has a huge booklet that uh, is quite programmatic. All kind of lyrics. So yeah, David Byrne, The Forest. Which year? I think it was 1991, <laughs> yes, I look, but it's the same year as this album, awkwardly. This is Born of Fire by Zone. Well, this is a unique uh, album that uh, should be known a little more. The sound is a quite peculiar mixture of ambient, tribal and uh, uh, with a touch of Neo folk and certain Byzantine influences, if I may say. <laughs> you have to listen for yourself. Um, it's a fascinating album. So, this came out on Potentia Records and the uh, Italian Musica Maxima Magnetica, which of course is Luciano Dari's label. So, uh, they were responsible for a lot of interesting and daring albums in the late 80s, early 90s. Um, so if you see this somewhere, I mean it's a bit rare, but if you see this somewhere, give it a try. I think it's an interesting little gem in everybody's CD collection. Very good listen. So that's it for now, and uh, I hope to see you next time. Keep it spinning. Goodbye.